I'm Steven with Batting Cages Inc. and today we'll show you how to assemble our Thumper 12 by 14 by 55 batting cage. First thing first is we're going to install the ground sleeves. We have a concrete option, but today we're using the concrete free option. The ground sleeves fall on a width of 16 feet and three length sections of 19 feet, adding up to 57 feet in total length. Since the frame is bigger than the net itself, this allows the net to slow down the balls before they hit the frame. This reduces the speed of ricochets. Once you have the layout of your ground sleeves, it's now time to put the install tool into the top of each sleeve. This will prevent damage to the sleeve while hammering it into the ground. You can leave a small amount of each sleeve above the ground or make them flush with the ground depending on the soil. Remember, accuracy is key when locating where the sleeves are installed. Make sure the sleeve is level and square when hammering. Once the ground sleeves are installed, it's now time to assemble the top of the frame. Refer to the layout diagram using cross sections A and length section C. The three-way fittings will be used for each corner and the four ways will be used for each middle section. All right, so on these four ways, when you're running the length section, what we want you to do is measure your pull out about five inches. So I, have a, I can make a mark here or what I like to do, pull it, keep my hand there and then work it right to it. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side, five inches, and it's gonna go just like that. Hand tighten them in. Don't over tighten. Do them. not over tighten. If you're not good with an impact, use a wrench. When doing the ends, we're gonna point this open end outward, and we're gonna do the same thing like on the four ways with these three ways. I'm gonna measure five inches, I'm gonna mark it with my hand. I'm gonna work it into it, to the mark. Finger tight, don't over tight. On these end ones, if it doesn't have an open end, all you're gonna do is push in till it hits. Finger tighten it up, easy. Once the top section of the frame is complete, you're going to install the first vertical pull into each fitting. This will bring the structure to five feet high. Once you have the first set of vertical poles installed, it's now time to use your Hang 50 kit. Throughout the process of setting up this cage, we found that it's much easier to add the Hang 50 kits at five foot high, opposed to in the video at eight feet high. Now that the hangers are installed, it's now time to add each remaining vertical pole section. Start with the 37 and a half male pole, follow that by the 59 inch female pole. Once all your vertical poles are in place, insert into each ground sleeve. At that point, it's now time to hang your net. It looks really good. All right, we got the cage all set up. So what we're doing now is we're trying to orientate the net correctly. Um, an easy way to find the top sections is you have three rope lines and then this tail coming off. And then you'll have a center rope line with another tail. And then the same thing which Steve is holding over there. Three rope lines running to a tail. And then on the bottom of it, it's similar to it too. So, and you're gonna have a door, which is an overlap piece of netting here. What we ended up doing, and we didn't show it, but we had the, the, the net upside down. And so we figured that out by- Locating the center rib lines. Yeah, locating the center rib lines. So we ended up flipping it over and now we're getting ready to hang. I worked the math and it's about every 18 meshes. So I count 18 meshes, I clip one on. Obviously you start with one and then count 18 meshes. So we'll work corners all the way down. Hopefully after watching this video, you're now confident in setting up your own cage. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, get a hold of us at battingcagesinc.com.